So this is the third video on hockey biomechanics, specifically breaking down the stride and skating. So this particular one, we're gonna go over the single support propulsion phase. Mickey, I'm gonna get you to lie on your back, please. So there's a few structures that are really critical for this phase. One being the hamstrings. Mickey's favorite? Yeah. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna get on here. And when I'm doing this particular technique, make sure you're not making a fist, make sure you're not being, you know, pokey in here. Lay your hand flat, really important. You okay? Uh -huh. So in regards to the single support propulsion phase, the hamstrings during this phase of a hockey stride, the hamstrings actively propel the body forward because they are the primary hip extensors of the glutes, but the secondary hip extensors are the hamstrings. They do this by extending the hip joint and flexing the knee. These are essential. There we go, acting as a, basically you can say that these acts as a, as a spring that launches the player forward on the ice. You okay? Now I'm gonna start going in a circle a little bit there. That's when it gets a little more intense. Yeah. You start to feel the difference between the semimembranosis, sandy tendinosis, and the biceps femoris. Yeah. Okay, so if I take it and I actually just go like that, you can feel the difference. Holy cow. Yeah. So if we have a problem in one of these structures, it's going to impact the ability, the player's ability to generate sufficient power for propulsion. It's gonna decrease their speed, diminish their agility. There we go. And uh, this can easily lead to uh, uh, muscle imbalances and uh, overuse injuries. Okay, so this video, I'm only doing one side, but we'd always do both sides. I'm sure Mickey would love it. I just got on there and just oh, yeah. treated both sides for like <laughs> the next hour or something. <laughs> I, I may not survive the process. No. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to the calf muscles. I'm gonna have you go Face down here, please. Okay, I'm just gonna slide down here just a little bit. Thank you. Okay, so get on the calf muscles, move it around. Good. So we start getting calf muscles, especially the gastrocnemius. This is incredibly important when it comes to uh, ankle plantar flexion. This is a really, really active area during uh, pushing off from the ice. Now, let's say we have a problem with the calf muscles. How is that actually gonna show up in terms of the single support phase of propulsion? Well, it's gonna impact the player's ability to push off the ice, as I've mentioned. It's gonna reduce their speed and power. And it also is gonna have a huge effect on balance and stability. So, I mean, these are really critical factors that are going to affect the player's performance. And uh, some things we usually don't think of when it comes to calf muscles, but these are essential for maintaining an upright posture during skating. You okay there, Mickey? Yeah. Wonderful. Yes. Especially when I start moving around, yeah. doing a little bit of circumduction in there so we actually can act, access the fascia a little bit easier. I'm going to have you come up on your knees, please. So anytime that we are accessing the gastrocnemius and soleus, we have to consider the three other muscles deep to this. We start getting in the deep flexors, the flexor halicus longus, the flexor digitorum longus, and the tibialis posterior. You okay? Mm -hmm. Right there. So we start getting on the uh, flexor halicus longus. There we go. A lot of times people will come in and they say, oh, I have a problem with my calf muscle, and then I'm checking out the gastroc and soleus, and yes, they are tight, but not nearly as tight as the deep flexors. And this has a huge influence on biomechanics. Good. Okay, good. And of course, as I mentioned, we're going to work on both structures in the body. Now, as you're going through this whole program here, realize the impact this has on performance. It is significant. And it's significant in terms of when you have a problem in an area and you leave it, it could possibly lead to an injury. So let's move on to the fourth stage of this series.